Welcome to the CLE of From a Click to a Contract, Formation and Enforcement of Agreements in the Digital Age. I am Aaron Cronin, and I will be the presenter of these materials today. Um, I want to start by kind of giving you the lay of the land for my background and why this topic was kind of interesting to me and why I bothered to put it together and present it. And it was that um, my experience has been one of being on the cusp of when technology uh, started to overtake and interface um, directly with the legal market. And uh, so I've been kind of on the edge of everything sort of trailing behind me technology-wise um, as I kind of came through. So I'm a true Gen Xer from that perspective. So I've sat on both sides of the table. Uh, so it's sort of like my parents talking about, you know, having black and white television. And, uh, you know, so this this conversation is directed probably at, at uh, Gen X and older, I would imagine. Um, but it will be helpful maybe for some perspective for new attorneys coming up as well. Um, but so effectively, I came out of law school in uh, from Hastings in 2000. And I was the last class to be taught how to do book research. Uh, we started off on books and were not allowed to use the um, Lexis or Westlaw tools until we had learned, I guess, our, our, at least a couple projects through book research and had to shepherdize through the old books and everything. I, I can't even conceive of trying to do book research now. Uh, the tools are so much better uh, for digital use to be able to search things and shepherdize and look things up and click on links, the entire process of book of what we do as attorneys in research is is built for. Um, I mean, it perfectly matches up with what the technology can offer us. So that's one place where I saw that uh, we we've just had a massive improvement in in functionality and speed based on the technology that's become available. It was also at the era of the dot bombs. So I was planning on coming out and working in a tech company and they were folding like uh, a house of cards uh, when I got out of school. So kind of went off into a different direction, worked at a, a defense firm and they did not have computers at their desks. We did not have computers until 2002. So we were still dictating and uh, leaving le giving letters to our assistants to, to type up uh, through our dictation on tape of all things. Which that system may or may not, uh, there's still, I think, a benefit to dictation um, with a human actually typing things. But I found the, the prospect of dictating something and not being able to see what I had written was uh, frustrating and uh, it took a lot of getting used to. So now my firm, we moved into peer file sharing and, uh, you know, servers and having our data in the cloud. And so we don't even have things localized. And so I, I dealt with some cases that I was starting to, again, run into these electronic evidence issues. And I was drawn towards electronic discovery as a, uh, a problem that needed solving. So I, I, I now do consulting and electronic discovery. Uh, and my office is basically 90%. If I would, I would go to so far as to say 98% paperless and virtual and digital um, with most everything happening very quickly over the internet, storing things, uh, making copies of things. And along with that came this immediate rub up against the use of paper for signing. We have this completely digital process and then all of a sudden we have to jump out uh, into an analog paper world, physically get a paper in front of a client uh, or even myself and sign it and then get it back into the digital world and then send it off to the uh, the court or to the other parties. And that to me uh, appeared to be really uh, inefficient and was one of the reasons why I started looking into what's the real, you know, we have these e-signing tools and all the courts are moving towards allowing us to do the slash S signature. What is the law behind that? And it seems like a, a, a law that most people don't really pay attention to. So I dug into it and discovered that Oh yeah, there's plenty of law on this, and uh, we just seem to be kind of ignoring it. So one of the things we're going to go through is the digital impact. We're going to discuss uh, in greater detail a little bit more about all of the, the angles in which the digitization of our jobs have uh, impacted the way that we practice, 
um, and how this specifically impacts electronic signatures and the idea of contract formation and consent or assent and uh, when that actually takes place because the, the digital tools that we have at our disposal have changed the landscape of how those things work. Um, a lot of the times we can still apply analogies from the old world to the new, but it doesn't always map up. So there has to be specific adjustments made to, to adjust for how digital uh, tools are, are changing that landscape.